Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs pregame show presented by PointsBet. Use the promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to 2000 bucks. Cody Del Mendo, Luke Stuckmeyer getting ready for Brewers, Cubs, game number three of this series. And he is Officer Del Mendo as well because he's been at the ballpark. We've had the Sarge patrolling the bleachers before. Gary Matthews back in the day for the Cubs. Now, I don't know if you want to just be officer, lieutenant, detective. Mm, I like detective. Detective Del Mendo breaking oh. up oh. crime in the bleachers. <laughs> how, how was your Memorial Day? Uh, Luke, it was, you know, for as bad as the Cubs are, at least you can walk into Wrigley Field, take in the, the sights and the views and all the different types of people. <laughs> And break up a fight in the bleachers. And when, right. when I say that I broke up a fight in the bleachers, all I did was watch people yell at each other, and I started screaming, there's no fighting in the bleachers. That's really all I did. I like to believe that I helped stop it because I started yelling it right. very loud and profusely. It was literally as the, at, at, like at the, at the game had already ended. Um, shout out to Bleacher Jeff. If you watch the show, I was, I was sitting by Bleacher Jeff last night. Um, him and a few people were yelling at these other people because one guy decided to throw up in the bleachers, oh, which, yeah. again, foul. I'm like sure that. it was a conscious decision. Yeah, very <laughs> conscious decision. I'm, all I'm saying is that there were. it looked like some fists were about to be thrown, and I just started you know, doing what, what I feel like every Cubs fan would do, and it, there's no fighting in the bleachers. There is, like, it's an unwritten rule out there. Just but how, like, did, how did you actually... Break it up by yelling that. Now, did they hear you and say, oh, Officer Del Mendo's over there. I should stop. This is ridiculous. He's right. There is no fighting the bleachers. <laughs> or did, you know, one of the hardcore security guys come down and break it up? Or did it just oh. well, maybe coincidence? You're not sure? I, again, I think it was right spot at the right time. There, no security actually came down because it happened so fast. And like I said, the game was ending. People were trying to leave. And that's how it started where these people were trying to leave and – Someone I think may have gotten in the way of someone, and they and then it, it. I guess that person happened to be the person who threw up. At least that's what it seemed like. I don't know. All in all, just a very uh, sad way to to end a in a three one loss at yeah. Wrigley Field, lose getting swept in doubleheader. Wow. Uh, but again, you know, I was there to you know make sure there was no fighting in the bleachers. Right, Ravi says you diffused the situation. I diffused the That's situation. That's the most we could ask for on a sweep to the Brewers and a, yes. on a doubleheader on a holiday. I was just doing my you know service my my due what's the word due diligence my due diligence doing your due thinking. diligence. Yeah, I was you know I w I would pay money, not good money, but I would pay money, potentially your money. Uh, to see uh, a video clip of this. Somebody that was in the bleachers yesterday has to have video of Cody yelling at the top of his lungs, there's no fighting in the bleachers. There's no fighting in the bleachers. Because every great fight video in, in the bleachers always has one guy yelling, there's no fighting in the bleachers. So it, it, it happened very fast. If you weren't in the... In the 504, 505 section, you probably didn't even see it. Again, it was the game had just ended. People were starting to file out. The, there's no, there was no discussion of it on social media. Like it, it was just very wild that me and my three buddies I was there with just happened to be standing there. We were, we had become friends with the people in front of us, and we they asked us to take a picture of them, and we were getting ready to do that. And then these people start yelling at each other, and then I start yelling, no, there's no fighting in the bleachers. And, you know, next thing I know, it's diffused, and, you know, everyone's on their way out, and I'm getting ready to take a picture with my buddies. So. Right. They were probably like, that's, is that, no, is it, that is Cody from CHGO. Please, guys, <laughs> we're going to stop fighting now. There's, yeah. there's no fighting at CHGO and in the bleachers. Yes. Um, by the way, can, can you hear the furnace? I wonder if you can hear the furnace during the back listening to the podcast or the pregame show. Natalie says, kind of. We have a furnace here. We turn it off as we get ready to do the show, but it is like uh, Delta Flight 747 is getting ready to take <laughs> off at O'Hare, yeah. and I'm just waiting for the jet fuel to hit me on the side of the face. Is <laughs> it's You so, say Delta? Or yeah, you, you Delta fly? Flight. Do they, I don't, do they fly anymore, Delta? They do. Do you fly Delta? No, not too much. I'm Delta not, flies I'm, to like 
Atlanta. Like if you're going oh, to Atlanta, yeah. you're going to get on a Delta flight. Okay. Uh, I've never, I don't have a, I've never used Delta. I don't have a preferred airline. I'm more of a Southwest. Yeah, person. I, I actually prefer Southwest, but again, I have problems getting on the the boarding group thing. They need to improve the boarding of Southwest at O'Hare. Yeah, all it's the, new there, but yeah. Yeah, but all the kids get on there faster than I do, even though I try and get on the app right away and get my group. You can like pay to be a pre-group boarder or something like. So all the A's are gone before I can even get there. And you know me, one finger on the phone, it takes longer than other yeah, people. So. Yeah. Uh, anyways, let's, let's get to the lineup because <laughs> I, I see that Jack is already asking, Simmons in again, question mark. And for some reason, I think that's not just a question. That's probably a statement from yeah, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, he <laughs> is in. He's batting ninth and playing second. And that is news because Nick Madrigal has been activated from the injured list. He is back from the no pun intended, back injury yeah, yeah. that he had, and he, but he's not in the lineup. Right. Um, and I know that if you look at the lineup, it's Morrell, Contreras, Wisdom, Schwindel, Horner, Hap, Frazier in right with Hap in left, Rivas at first, and Simmons playing second. Yep. I believe you're going to say you feel like I do, that I, I'd rather see Madrigal playing almost every single time over Simmons. Yeah. I Just mean, for the future. Like, I want to. Right. Yeah. No, I think, you know, we'll probably see Madrigal in there to, tomorrow starting. But, yeah, tonight it is a little annoying because it's like, it's not like Simmons is hitting the ball off the cover. Not like he ever had, like, not like he has a history of it either. <laughs> uh, but I also wouldn't have mind if Morrell was playing second and they played Ortega out in the center. You know what I mean? Or right. or moved Hap to center and put someone else in left. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't have to play Simmons. Now, I get why they are for defensive reasons, but whatever, man. Let the pitcher DH for Simmons, Robbie says. <laughs> Robbie's Seriously, always got a funny. He's Justin always got a funny Steele, funny. Justin Steele, I've, when I've talked to Justin Steele, he, he, he doesn't like the DH coming to the National League. And he was very proud that the one major league hit that he has is against Corbin Burns. Really? Yes. He's very proud about it when I've talked to him about it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would rather see Justin Steele bat against Eric Lau tonight instead of in Jordan Simmons. <laughs> Niren's feeling positive about all of this. He says Cubs will be 20 games under in two to three weeks. Thanks, Niren. We appreciate just passed you, man. Memorial Day. Yeah. We haven't even made it to the 4th of July, and we're talking about being 20 games under. <laughs> but, you know, look on the bright side. <laughs> yeah. Look on the bright side, you know. I am excited to see Clint Frazier in right field uh, at least getting the at-bats. I want to I see Madrigal get the at-bats at second. I want to see Frazier get significant at-bats in the outfield. And with Suzuki out right now, if it has to mean he's on the other side, whatever. I just want to see – I want to see Frazier. I want to see what he can be. If he's nothing, okay, we'll figure yep. that out. Um, and maybe the same goes for Madrigal, although Madrigal's younger, and so I feel like – Yeah. Give nah, it a little time. Yeah, I mean, Clint Frazier, I mean, f former first-round talent, right? And honestly, if he didn't get appendicitis, maybe we would know what, what Clint Frazier is. But he wasn't actually. He wasn't even really getting a lot of playing time just to, to start the year, and now since he's came back, he's gotten starts in every game. So I guess that's a good sign. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Jason Hayward is out. But you know, yeah. I, again, you know, we if he can show some signs of, you know, of that potential that he has, then at least it's something to look forward to. Uh, it hasn't been great. Yet right. in these three games, he did have a walk in game one yesterday, which was pretty nice. But he str he struck out a few times already, and again, the Brewers' pitching is pretty good. So I don't know how much to put into it, but I also feel like he just needs to get some timing back. I know he played for like a week in Iowa or two weeks, or whatever it was. I don't know, but he's got to get some his timing back and just get you know normalized, get into that routine right. like every major league player. So I feel like we gotta get we, we gotta give him at least a month, month and a half, see, and see what happens. Um, I know he had a bad defensive play out there in the left yesterday as well, but 
happens. It happens. It happens. It's why it's left this field. Team. <laughs> uh, Attention, passengers. Flight 739 Delta to Atlanta is now boarding. <laughs> it continues to go on back there. By the way, <laughs> I see on the chat that Ferris is calling my BS saying, excited, Luke? Question mark. Not sure if I'd go that far. Mm. All right, you're right. I, I was, you know, listen, half of my job <laughs> here is, is to keep this positive for Cody that he can make it through the season in I one piece that. here. Like, he, the, I want to keep him happy. So I, I got to keep the morale up for him a little bit and, you know, give him little pieces of carrot to drag him through the season week by week. He gets amped up, but when they lose two to the Brewers and, you know, and they dumped one to the Sox that they should have lost, sort of won. Um, yeah. They lost five I'm, of six. I'm giving him a carrot. I'm, you know, I'm trying to keep the, keep I, the guy uh, happy. Do you know uh, our good friend Dom Frederick? He does uh, Twitter Spaces like every Monday, or every like every once every yeah, week. The he director does of on, morale. Yeah, the director of morale. He does these Twitter Spaces every week, uh, usually Monday, but because yesterday was Memorial Day, I think that's why he did it today. Uh, but I I jumped in on there today and. I think I, I probably should have saved all my, my anger for the, for the pregame show like I normally did, but I went on there and just yelled for like... Got it out. You know, for a good, like, I don't know, five minutes. Um, shout out to Dom, by the way. Uh, but, you know, they were... You know how he is. They were trying to be, you know, find some fun things to talk about. Someone slid in there and started talking about how we need to call up Robel Garcia because he has a... <laughs> at least he has an eleven hundred OPS or something like that. <laughs> like and and then some other guy was like, We need to trade for William Contreras in Atlanta. <laughs> and I'm just like just having the best time listening to this stuff because it's so wild. But yeah, that's where we're at in the Cubs season, man. So that's kind of the point of why I'm saying it. And again, I I said on on the Twitter space that I've I've I think I've waved the white flag on on the year. Like Whatever we get the rest of the year is, it's all for the future. It is what it is. I, here's I'm waving the white happen. flag. Like, prove me wrong, Cubs. We're d- ten games under 500. We lost 20 to five to the Reds in one of these, one of these five games we lost. Yeah, we right. we should have, honestly, in the five of the six games, we probably should have won at least three of them. I'm just, you know, I would just like to see Nico Horner continue to grow and and hopefully Morell keep playing well and. Nick Madrigal will come up and, 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 and start playing like a 300 hitter that his career has shown yes. in the past. And, you know, maybe Keegan Thompson keeps shoving. Maybe we get a bounce back start from Justin Steele tonight. There's a bunch of other things too. But, like, I, I'm at the point where, you know, I, I, I think I'm done caring about the win-loss record. Uh, Sigs Inside 2020 says, Cubs are dot, 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 selling this season. And I think yes. I believe that was true from the very, just like last year. I believe that was true prior to the season. Yeah, I, I think that was going to be like it was going to take <clears throat> some sort of miracle for that not to be the case. That that's why some of the guys are on the roster. Like it yeah. was going to take some sort of special chemistry and just stroke of good luck that every question mark they had was going to have to hit. Right. And and and, you know, and again, some like, are some are. I've said it on previous shows. Like the reason that I was optim, like pr- definitely way too optimistic, was just because you know I was hopeful maybe we'd see Davis a little earlier than what we expected. I, I was. I mean, I'm at the point now where I'm like, why haven't they called up Killian considering the injuries? Uh, and you know, I thought maybe you know I thought maybe Clint Fra- Frazier would play decent. Right. He has barely played. Haven't He's hitting like him. 130 when he has played. Uh, you know. There are all kinds of other guys. I mean, obviously, Frank has regressed, but not – like, he's played better now, so I think we're getting a little bit of what we expected. But still, like, it wasn't like Frank of in the second half of last year. Wisdom is, you know – I think we've gotten – we've seen everything that Patrick Wisdom is. He's – I don't want to say he's streaky, but I feel like when he's in he's his good stretches, he's pretty streaky. Um, but Cody, Nico Horner. Yeah, Nico Horner, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, Nico Horner. Well, I, I also <laughs> felt like Nico Horner, if you got him to take that, like really t- t- take home that shortstop position, then you would get better. We create better play from other guys on the roster too. I mean, honestly, we just haven't got a lot of it, 
consistency. That's that right. to me. That's the big thing. And also didn't help that Miley and Alzale were on the IL to enter the season. I feel like if that starting pitching staff was what it is, you know, the lot for this month at least, I feel like maybe there'd be a few more wins in April. Who knows where we're at? I don't know. Again, they were in every game in the last outside of that twenty to five loss to the Reds. They were in every game, and they they. They literally gave them all away. Like, if they would have won most of those games, they would be creeping around 500 right now. Instead, they're like 10 games under. So, How do you, how do you feel about uh, facing Lauer tonight? 5-1, and one, 55 strikeouts, 12 walks. Uh, one might say, not great, uh, <laughs> Bob. Uh, but uh, I think the Cubs went up against Lauer in Milwaukee. And uh, they, that was one of the games they lost like, by, like, double digits. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> I'm particularly not feeling great about it. Uh, yeah, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I am wrong. I hope we see some growth from guys tonight. You know, hopefully Morel takes him deep cause he's never seen Morel. uh, you know, stuff like that. But if they, if they hit like they did last night against Ashby, I don't know. I feel like we're going to have to get you a shirt and a nameplate that says former director of morale. <laughs> Former. <laughs> Former assistant director of morale. Yeah, um, I don't know. Hey, the best way to support CHGO is to download the PointsBet app. Use the code CHGO when you sign up. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you get a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content. Ryan Herrera, Jared Willis, writing every day for you. And you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO Locker. Hey, we're both wearing the swag today. Yeah. We call this uh, Drip Tuesday. Drip Tuesday, huh? <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, email pointsbet at allchgo.com and we'll help you. Remember that PointsBet is your home for live in-game betting. They even have a new exclusive feature, live NBA same-game parlay, which it's coming down to the finals now. First time ever, build your perfect live same-game parlay only at PointsBet. Combine your favorite bets anytime during the game. You can even boost them, your same-game parlays. Online sign-up available in Illinois. Download the PointsBet app right now. Register your account. Start to finish all from your phone, and signing up is faster than ever. Use the code CHGO to get those two risk-free bets up to two grand. So what are you waiting for once the game starts? Don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. You did Uh, the ad instead of me. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. You're right. I usually do the points bet ad read, and then Luke just yeah, stole, I just, stole, I just it from stole me tonight. Well, we're gonna have to have you do double. Maybe you do the own ad tonight. <laughs> um, I, I was cracking up because I'm gonna bust on uh, Brendan when he do, when they, he does the read for points bet. He always goes points bet points bet <laughs> at the yeah. beginning, almost yeah. like it's a question mark. So, right. Brendan, if you're listening, it's points bet. <laughs> <laughs> points bet. Uh, anyways, who, who we have on the chat still? Yeah, Niren, uh, Niren's the on, Robbie, Jack. All the, he, Jack says he wouldn't trade Nico for Mike Trout. I hope that's wow. hyperbole. Because <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would trade anything for Mike Trout, even at his age now. Uh, same thing with Juan Soto. Speaking of trades, though, and we will, I'm sure, hit on this in the postgame show as well. John Heyman uh, saying the Cubs will want an arm and a leg for Wilson <laughs> Contreras. Perhaps we should, you know, they should also send another arm and another leg and a, yeah. and a, and a torso and everything. First, let me say that <laughs> that seems, I don't know if that's necessarily reporting. That just seems like, he and yes, his, of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't, like, yeah, yeah, they're not going to take nothing for him. Right. I would hope. I, his, I would hope uh, they're looking for an arm and a leg for a top three catcher in baseball. Right. In his article from the New York Post, he, you know, he said that, like, a – a random executive said that they're that they predict that yeah. they're going to have to send an arm and a leg. So, hey, like it, I think that he's just saying that, like he just typed that out to say that, right? Yeah, and he I'm, also just agreed. said that, in, like in on that podcast that we talked about the other day or last week, the one that him and Joel Sherman do when they brought up like signing how the Cubs were in rumored to be part of like a trade for Brandon Nimmo or whatever, which didn't yeah. make any sense to us. But uh yeah. As far as Contreras, it's like, yeah, water is wet. I mean Yeah, that's not breaking it's yeah. not breaking news, that's all right. I'll say. It might have just been a comment, you know, it was part article. of like his article and saying that like these are the guys that are gonna be available. But he also he also did say that 
the Cubs are planning to be big spenders in uh, like in the off season. So I mean, right. I, I that You're, gives me hope that maybe like if they don't get the arm and a leg that they want, that they would then hold on to them. Like they, I I think that they are real. Like if if Heyman's gonna say that, like put that out there, yeah. it makes me think that they will do it if they get like the like an absolute insane haul, like someone like from a team that is desperate, like just absolutely desperate. Right. Like a trade that you would have saw, you know, back at the beginning of the Theo era, which I don't feel like we see trades like that anymore. So let me you know put out I mean? a scenario that never ever happens almost. Almost never, ever, never, ever, ever. Very rarely. Chapman is like one of the only guys I can think of. What if they went to Wilson Contreras and said, we do want you to be part of the future. The best way you can help our future is to go chase a World Series ring with somebody this, and, and we will 100% make every honest attempt. It didn't happen with the other guys. We will do our best to bring you back. We will, match, we'll, we will try to match any offer that's out there for you to come back and we'll give you the free agent deal you want, but we also could get a haul for you if we're out of it this season. Would you be willing to accept that and still give us a shot? Most players are not, but we saw yeah. Chapman yeah. come to the Cubs. John Lester and almost back. went back to the Red Sox. That's right. So He didn't. He came to the Cubs, but he almost did. I'll just throw that out there. It's one scenario I never considered happening, but if they are going to be big spenders, why not spend on one of your guys? And if the season's not going to happen... Well, I don't want to see Wilson go, but if Wilson's going to go and have a 65% chance of coming back and we get something, oh, now, you, yeah. now you're going to soften, that was, I mean, that was, soften that to me a little bit. Right. Because I do think if Wilson Contreras, let's say late July comes around, who's going to hit the market that's going to be a bigger name than Wilson Contreras? Maybe a pitcher that's out yeah, there that's available. A reliever but who's gonna like what that. everyday player is gonna go out there that can impact a team like he would? Again, a top three, top five catcher minimum in baseball. A lot of teams would make a major improvement with him yeah. behind the plate and at the plate. Right. Niren makes a good point though, that they still have their arbitration that's hearing right. this month or yeah. next month. Right. So I you I no, I don't. I don't I, love from that the part outs, of it. From the outside looking in, it doesn't look like the Cubs and Contreras have the best relationship. So, no, I listen. I, I don't know though. I know that he loves being here. That's true. To the point where we've seen him weep about it. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. he yeah. gets emotional about it. Sometimes that's enough to draw a guy back. I know Maybe. his feelings are going to be hurt if they do trade him. And do I think this is a realistic scenario? No, because I can only think of like one or two times it's ever happened in Major League Baseball. But right. his attachment to this team seems different. Yeah. I mean, as someone, as you said earlier, trying to be, you know, make me feel yeah. optimistic, you're being more optimistic than That's I right. normally see you off camera. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if... I had a lot of caffeine. Today. That will be the only... Like, if they do trade Contreras, that will be Strava? the one thing that, like, keeps me... <laughs> Strava? That, like, keeps me, you know, a little out there, like, hopeful that maybe they were able to do that. But I don't know. I I, I genuinely don't know. But I, I, I wouldn't... I would... I would be cool if they, like, told us that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. Like, I don't I, think they would. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they would. I, I see... Uh, Sigs Inside 2020 saying Braves would love to reunite the Contreras brothers. I don't think they'd be willing to give up anything. I don't think believe they'd Matt be willing Olson to give up for Wilson because <laughs> his brother's playing so well. Yeah. They're not desperate for another catcher at this yeah. moment. But yeah. I think as far as teams that really need a catcher, like you can look at the Yankees, you can look at the Mets. I feel right. like one of those two teams could use a catcher. I don't know. It, like Jack, Jack, don't put Jack, don't put words in my mouth. Luke Stuckmeyer, new director of morale. There's only one director of morale. You're actually the there director of morale. There's only one director of morale. I'm Joe I I'm strictly Cody's happy coach. <laughs> director of morale, director of mor moral, whatever. Moral, uh, moral. <laughs> I I'm strictly his. There is only one Dom, okay? We 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 are not overstepping right. bounds. But we do try to be optimistic here as best I'm as we Cody's can. Cody's but also personal realistic. happiness coach. Yes. Luke Luke gets me out of bed every day. 
Uh, that's not true. <laughs> that's a whole other story now. Like you, you're starting a whole other thing, Cody. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's always interesting to see and hear different reports about it. But it, that's not going to be the last time somebody mentions Wilson Contreras no. and trade stuff. It's going to really heat we'll up. We'll do it again tonight on the post game show, probably. Yeah. So who you got? We're down to. Here's the standings, I believe. Cody five. Yes. Ryan three. Yes. Me. Two. Two. And I think at one point I was up two one one. <laughs> so it has not gone well. It's not been great for Luke. <laughs> so I took the first pick and I went with uh, Contreras tonight. Uh, because he's hitting the ball well. He doesn't like the Brewers. It's warm out, Wrigley Field. He did hit a moonshot. He shot probably yesterday. heard about the John Heyman report. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's Taking each at bat. He remembers each at bat when he gets up there. Yeah. Uh, that's who I'm going to go with. I see Jax uh, pulling for Nico tonight. That's his yeah, pick. I see that. No, I like Contreras as a good pick, but I'm going to take uh, Nico as well as, as oh, Jack. You and Jack sticking with Nico, huh? And uh, Ryan's taking Morrell. Which interesting because, I mean, I think those are the three obvious picks tonight. Yeah. And I considered each one of them. Morrell was my first choice, and then I was like, no, 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 no. How can I go against Wilson? And then I, I saw that little nugget about him with the Heyman stuff, and I was like, yep, all right. <laughs> That's well, fuel to the fire of one Wilson Well, Nico's Contreras. been playing pretty well. He's upped his batting average Great. over the last couple of games. He had, what, he had a three-hit game against the Sox on Sunday, I think, and then had a three-hit game in the first game against Milwaukee yesterday. And then for some reason, David Ross said, ah, let's give him a rest. So Nico's got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. He's like, hey, I want to yeah, play yeah, every yeah. day. So, uh and lefty righty. I mean, I know Lauer is good against anyone, but who know who knows? Maybe maybe Lauer's due to to give up some runs. I uh, well, we'll see. We'll hey, see. Ferris says I'm actually the director of the CHO Turf Management. Stay off the lawn. That is true. Stay off the like lawn. A nice a nice green lawn. Yeah. Slightly fertilized, but not too much. Um, Robbie likes Schwindy City, so he's going. To I go like Morell because again, he's going for Cubs history tonight. Tied franchise history. With Wilson Contreras, 13 games to start his Cubs career with getting on base. On base in all 13 games. So, let's not jinx him. Go for it tonight. Madrigal is not playing. He's not starting tonight. He could play tonight, but he's not yeah. playing. A question asked on the chat. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets in the game, especially when the Cubs, if, if Simmons happens to be coming up with, like, in a big spot. I would not be surprised if they bring up Madrigal. And we didn't mention a lot, but we have, you know, one or two minutes left. But hoping Steele can, your guy Steele can turn it around now. Oh, yeah. And now, how does this go? When you DM him, <laughs> good luck. He doesn't pitch well. When you don't DM him, how, how does it, what, what's the pattern of success here? So I've, I've, I've taken a break because I, I just kind of want him to, like, focus. Right, yeah. You, know you know want I mean? him to be distracted yeah, by I your DMs. I want him to be distracted by me. Is but, this is this a parasocial relationship or does I'm, he answer you? I've you know, I've talked to him <laughs> face to face before and like through like a Zoom and then like we've DM'd back back and forth before, you know. He he's a nice guy. He he enjoys my fandom. Nice. Uh but tonight as I sent Justin a DM literally a half hour ago before we started the show. All right, so the, he might have seen this before he went out to he warm up. He might have. He might have. But I said, Justin, I am sure you won't see this until after the game, but I have placed a wager on the Brewers to win tonight, <laughs> and it's mainly because I wanted to tell you this so, you, so you'd so you use it as motivation to shove the Brewers into Lake Michigan. Hope this bel- bodes well for you, bounce back city. So he hasn't replied, so I assume he hasn't seen it. But I'm just, you know, I'm trying to help him – Right. Make the bounce back start. I believe that Trying he is something. Trying to stoke the fire a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. He's like, that motherfucker bet on the Brewers. He bet against me. I'm shoving seven innings, no runs down their throats tonight. I, that's the thinking in my head. So uh, when the Cubs win tonight, uh, you can all thank me for being de- Justin Steele's yeah. personal motivator. Yeah, personal motivator. So... I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, he's seen it, Cody, they said. He probably has, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope he replies back after the game when the Cubs win and is like, fuck you. 
<laughs> well, we will. Uh, now I'm really actually interested to see how he does. <laughs> yeah, right. Because and I and then once the outcome has happened, then I will want to know. Like, if we could send Ryan, <laughs> usually the starting pitcher goes to the podium a lot of times. If we could arm Ryan with the information that you did DM Justin Steele that you'd bet on the other team, I mean, if but he's, not to be mad about it. If he's too nervous to bring it up to him at the podium, they usually catch him in the locker room too. That's right. So I would, I would like just, to find uh, out that information. When did he read the When did he read the DM, and how did it impact his game, if at all? Yeah, he can yeah. weasel his way up to the front of the scrum and so like, when hey, I, you know whenever, my friend Cody. When when Steele shoves tonight, and whenever he gets a standing ovation when he comes out, I'm gonna send a screenshot of my DM to Justin to Ryan and be like, "Hey, show this to him and ask him if he saw it." Right. Yeah. And you don't even want to know what Ravi has said about you in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Ravi. Exactly. You know? uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks for dropping in to check out the CHGO Cubs pregame show. We'll see you back here after the game for a full hour of post game. Until then. Hopefully, fly the W.